So welcome once again to the Olympic Regatta course for the rescheduled endurance races over 5,000 meters that were abandoned uh, yesterday because of the thunderstorm. And so uh, very shortly we'll be under the way with the men's individual kayak. And if you're not familiar with this particular type of racing, very different to the uh, straight line action down the regatta course. Uh, it's a course of 5,000 meters uh, comprising a number of uh, loops. And these are the names of the men who have entered this competition. But we're going to keep a close eye on this. Uh, because of the rearrangement, there is a possibility as a result of uh, previous travel arrangements that one or two of these uh, athletes may not participate. That's only a maybe, but we'll try to keep you honest, so to speak, as the line up as they line up for the start. <coughs> Max Renschmidt, good to see his fans here. Of course, part of the dynamic German Four. Already, of course, a, a gold medalist, and in a way, on this Sunday afternoon, now that all the the main racing is done, complete freedom to paddle as he likes. And he's certainly going to be one of the men to watch out for as they come in to line up for this men's kayak 5000. So sit back once again with Malcolm Johnson and myself, David Goldstrom. Uh, this should be uh, quite a fascinating race, the men's kayak over 5,000 meters. A first long loop up to the 500 meter mark and then when they've completed the first lap, then they go round another series of smaller loops, and you'll hear a bell to identify the last lap, which is not for us, but for the paddlers, because believe it or not, some of them do miscount. So away they go at the first time of asking. And the men nearest to you have the task of moving across to their right steadily, but they're using more energy, and that's why, that's because they're trying to set themselves up for the first of the turns, which, as I say, is on this opening long loop. Yeah, really interesting as well, a real contrasting style. Some, some of these paddlers absolutely going for it. Look at that, that's Joseph Tostel. He is a man at mountain and multi-medalist. He's so strong, he's broken his paddle just off the start. There he goes. So, he's taken very little part in this regatta over the course of the weekend, Joseph Tostel, and he won't take any further part in that race. So there's one of the main contenders out already. There'll be a, there was a sprint for position, as we see here, just following the paddlers. And uh, if you're in the lead there, you can have the group form around you. Uh, whereas if you're at the back, you see Jos Jaktrysak, watch for him, the Slovenian number 11, just moving his way through there. You need to try and find the right wash to sit on to conserve your energy. So moving up to, fir to the first of the anti-clockwise turns, in this race and at the moment they're uh, pretty well packed together but that will change now you can see the men on the right of your picture they've got to move over so that they make sure that they are on the right side of the boy lane when they come to make the turn uh, yeah. and if they're squeezed out and well, these things do happen. They absolutely do. And Fernando Pimenta, who was leading, he's in the red cap and the sunglasses. He just has a look round to see where everyone else is. It might be that there's a sprint for the turn. There is the Norwegian trying to get a good position so he can go around the outside of the boys for the first turn. See Max Rensmith there in the white sunglasses, just having a little bit of trouble trying to get on that wash. But, uh, very comfortable in the front there, as we've seen him so many times. Fernando Pimenta in the red cap. Well, I'm not sure that everybody Oof. was legal there. Well, Pimenta, that was the first boy with the flag on there, but he didn't leave a lot of room for the other panelists to get on the inside. Just a, a little warning to the Norwegian to say, well, watch out, I'm in charge here, thank you very much. I'll go as tight to that boy as I want. And Norwegian hitting, clattering the boy, Edvin Vold, but I think he got through on the correct side of it. There, and uh, it's uh, Pimenta ahead of Balint Noah of uh, Hungary. 
who would be also one of the men to keep an eye out for this particular race. Yeah, absolutely. Really, really fantastic paddler. Valid no in the short distances, but also this endurance event. Interesting to see that a lot of the paddlers who are good over 500 metres and 1,000 metres also very good at the 5,000 metre racing. Not only do you need a large aerobic capacity, but also you need a tactical, a tactical brain as well. And the tactical brain of number eight, Fernando Pimenta, means that he's just decided to let somebody else take up the mantle and work hard. And that is Valent No from Hungary. And Pimenta happy to sit in on the wash, on the wave created by the Hungarian and conserve his energy. Well, Valent No was the European champion a year ago from uh, Ale Urania, who would be a real challenger here. He represents Belarus, but like uh, Russia, no Belarus athletes uh, permitted to participate. Pimenta got the bronze medal a year ago ahead of Samuele Burgo of Italy and Mads uh, Pedersen. Max Hoff of Germany was their representative uh, a year ago, and he finished in sixth place. As yes, we've just seen the racing there, that's really interesting. These could be the first, uh, the main protagonist. It's Max Wrench, but just moving up on Pimenta there. Didn't, didn't maybe take the lead, but wanted the best wash, which is the one on the side of Pimenta. He's taken it, very happy with that. Pimenta has a look around, maybe even a quick word with his German competitor. <laughs> In fact, he exchanged a few words there, and uh, those two leading the way. Neither of them willing to relent. The man who should be able to play a part in this race is Jost uh, Zakrasek, ja uh, ja I should say, of Slovenia, uh, who's normally there or thereabouts in this competition, but now the uh, group's beginning to establish themselves. Yeah, they are there. They're just, the German getting clattered uh, a little bit there. Uh, Walter Buzan, the Spaniard, is in that top group as well. As we saw a little bit back, just Dan Johnson from Great Britain, I think, got clattered into and actually took a swim in the water just after the first turn. So he's going to be unable to get back in touch with these groups. Now, the rules of this competition say that the last man to cross the line at the end of each lap should be eliminated. Uh, we used to call it devil takes the hindmost, so we're just keeping an eye to see whether that rule is being enforced here. There you can see that there's Jos Jakrishak, who you mentioned, number 11. I think it was Dan Johnson just taking a swim in the, uh, the cool waters here of the very clean and clear lake in Munich. And uh, lap one, the big lap, is now complete. So the race now settling into the shorter loops now. Pimenta very happy to sit up there. Boat nine, that is the Hungarian, and that is uh, Balint Noet. Also uh, in picture there, very close to the action. That's Walter Buzan of Spain. Just, I uh, just thought he was going to make a move, but he hasn't, in fact. No, he's hanging it in there. There's a couple just behind them. One of them is the Slovenian, who's desperately he's just out of camera shot, trying to catch up uh, with these. Max Renschmidt has a lovely little wash in the middle there, directly behind Fernando Pimenta. But we've got five away at the minute, and the Slovenian looking to join them. Yeah, that's uh, Jost, and he's getting there. And uh, 18. That is the man who's been taken out of the race. As I said, uh, that's the rule. And so uh, Kevin Holdians of uh, Estonia asked to just step aside, so to speak. And there he is. That's the difficult water, the slightly choppier water that Jatrachak has to contend with. Number seven going through there as well. Former world champion in the K2, Martin Nathel from Sweden. So he has a chance maybe to uh, catch up with his group, but it looks like the Spanish pilot decides he's had enough of clattering, ar clattering around for washes. He wants to control this group for a little while, and he chooses to go to the front. Pimenta and Renschmidt, possibly the two favorites. They don't seem too fussed by it. 
Yeah, I think that's a good decision because even though, of course, the others can try and hang on his wash and use it, but if you're feeling really uncomfortable because you're being bruised and bounced around, better to get out there because uh, otherwise your rhythm is just being constantly disturbed. Yeah. So we're down to uh, just the five in the lead group and Jost of Slovenia now. Well, he'd be a good 20, 30 metres off the pace. This is going to be really hard to uh, actually try and get to the front five, particularly with the acceleration that the Spanish paddler put into the race. Well, that's right, and a little bit of tactics going on around the bend there. Uh, Pimentic has been pushed close to the boy, and there'll also be a race uh, just in a few minutes' time to see which is the next person due to be knocked out. Looks like it's going to be uh, number 14, the Finnish paddler, Jeremy Hakala. It's a good picture there of the boats. The most efficient loop is a nice smooth loop close to the boy. Jastrashak from Slovenia doing that now. He had his work put out to catch the front group. He wasn't able to do so. And the front group now indeed has split up into a group of three and then a group of two. Yeah, Jos was very unlucky because just as he was starting to close, that's when the acceleration went in. Uh, if he had another, what, 15, 20 seconds, he might have got there, but not to be. And uh, now, well, it's about the big boys, isn't it? It's about Pimenta and Renschmidt and also uh, the Spanish paddler who's made the uh, move there, Walter Busan, who leads the way. Yeah, I've got the Hungarian in there actually doing really, really well, number nine, just, just sitting in on the right-hand side of Pimenta. In fact, Renschmidt just oh, began to drop back. Yeah. Beg your pardon. Couldn't see because of the silhouette. Well. There you go, there's number 14 out, that's the Finnish paddler. And Renschmidt, well, he's done a lot of racing, a lot of very successful racing this season. I mean, he's still in fifth place, but uh, they've lost touch, those two, with the front group. And I wonder if Pimenta will just have a... be aware of that. He doesn't really want Renschmidt, the German. He knows what sort of finish he'll have. He doesn't really want the German to catch him up. Well, it's a question whether he gets a chance to cast an eye at the big screen. That's right, he's got the big screen. Maybe he'll do that at the end of this short lap here as he looks across to his left. So uh, there, once again, goes the Spaniard. Yeah, he likes to mix it up, doesn't he? We saw that in almost exactly the same place in the last lap, actually. Just pick it up after that bend, coming down towards the finish line to make sure the group arrange itself around him. It's very difficult to do, and it's very uncomfortable for everybody else. I mean, a, a, an analogy or a comparison, I should say, would be the great Kenyan runners on long distance, people like the legendary Henry Rono, who could do that, and he could just absolutely destroy a field because he sort of run away, drop back, run away, drop back, and uh, they never knew where they were with him. Yeah, that's absolutely right. You know, surging is not necessarily the most energy-efficient way of doing it, but psychologically, you can really break your opposition uh, by doing that. Well, neither of the uh, following two look particularly worried about it at the moment. Yeah, you can see that's Norwegian, and that's Max Renschmidt as well, the German just behind him in the blue belt. They've got a gap, and they've got a lot of work to do if they're going to catch um, that front group of three there. We'll also have a little bit of a battle. We've got number 15, number 10, which we've seen a couple of minutes coming down to the bend. I think they may well fight it out, not wanting to be the last one and, and the next person to drop out. Yeah, Nicola Ripamonti is 10. And uh, 15, Rasmus uh, Knudsen of Denmark. Uh, really interesting there, Fernando Pimenta just taking it up after that bend. He's, he's gone round in front of the screen now, and I don't know whether he's decided to go early or does he just want the group to form around him? But he certainly got the Hungarian there. Hungarian's almost down tools. That leaves only two now at the front of this race. Well, it's a bit like uh, Fernando actually saying, well, if, if you want to mess around like this, I'll show you how it's done. Well, he's done that. It looks like this is the Italian number 10 that's going to be dropping out. 
judging by his body language, as we can see from commentary, he's actually quite relieved at that. And there are the lead two. I wouldn't be very surprised if these two have raced each other in, in the past quite often in endurance races, popular races in Portugal and in Spain. And these two popular and experienced paddlers. Just to confirm, Nicola Rivermonti of Italy eliminated from the race. That's interesting, Max Renschmidt there, bringing in a bit of a burn, but struggling to get around this bend. He's really struggling with his rudder. Uh, not enjoying this at the moment, Max Renschmidt. No, and, you know, when you're in that situation, he sort of knows that, you know, what chance has he got? Has he got any chance of a bronze medal? Because that's the best he can hope for. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I'm sure strength-wise he has. Pimenta has another word with the Spanish paddler. I'm sure, as I said, they know each other well. Maybe having discussion, when are we going to fight it out? Should we just leave it to the last lap, or should we do it early on? Pimenta's the man who has the history in this race, and he'll be delighted that Kevin Santos, his teammate, has collected a goal today, and if uh, Fernando can get one as well, that will do no harm to the support that the Portuguese Federation, Marcos uh, Oliveira, the General Secretary, the man in charge of, well, essentially finding the money to keep the squad going. Yeah, it's not an easy task for the Portuguese. They have some very successful paddlers. They have a good club system, but they don't have a lot of money um, accessible to them. But they do have a great facility at Montemorovello. I'm sure we'll see events coming their way again, major internationals, uh, in the next few years. There's Walter Buzan of Spain. Unlike, though, this course, Montemor, which is a lovely course to look at, lovely course to be at, but actually the alignment with the prevailing wind uh, doesn't yeah. work there, and you do get uh, some really disadvantageous winds, which means that basically, if you want to have fair conditions, race very early or race very late. Yeah, they have a trouble with that. They're trying to put tre build, um, plant lots of trees in there. They put things in that hopefully don't, uh, ensure there isn't as much disruption from the wind, but it is still windy and uh, often a crosswind, which is difficult for the paddlers. And sometimes it means the racing isn't as fair as it could be. Having said that, it's a great facility, and uh, the Portuguese always do a fine job of putting on a, an international event. But well, here's the chasing group, and you can see Jost Zakrasekt has actually connected with this group, which is very interesting because that potentially puts him in with a chance of a bronze medal. Well, it does, and if anyone's going to be there in the fight at the end, he will. He's very, very experienced, experienced whitewater paddler. There he's at the back of that group, just cruising on the wash, experienced in 1,000 metres, 500 metres, and 5K, so he gives himself a good chance. Max Renschmidt's dropped off that group now, so unlikely he's going to be in the fight for a bronze medal. Yeah, I think with Jost, uh, he's doing exactly the right thing because he's expended quite a bit of energy to uh, reconnect. So what he's doing now is just taking the opportunity to recover, and I sense we're going to have a real good sprint for the bronze medal. Well, that's what we want to see, although it's a long race, 5Ks. Because of the advantage of having a, sitting on a wash, you often get groups, which makes for some good finishes. So Pimenta still happy to lead at the moment. Yeah, very much an Iberian battle here. Because Pimenta stayed on longer than he originally planned to. A chance for him to get a gold medal. He'll want to make the most of this now. He's done the hardest of the work. He's now established his position. This is all about the tactics. Yeah, he's got the inside line on the turn as well, Pimenta, hasn't he? And, uh, you know, he may well think... Uh, he may well think now that, uh, you know, he's just not going to relent. Whenever he notices to his right the Spaniard pick it up, he will match it and keep his nose in front. 
It's going to be really interesting to watch those two to decide who sprints first. So this is the uh, battle for uh, third place. You can see uh, Zost, Jost on the outside. Just beginning to try and move himself. Well, he's on the inside as you look. Yeah, nicely negotiated around that boy there. A bit of a contrast to Max Renschmidt in the previous lap. Jos Jakrasak knows what he's doing there. Look how close he just brushes the boy as he goes past. Yeah, because the main contenders are on the last lap, and now the pace going into that chase group there as Jos decides that he wants to make a move. He feels good, and he wants to uh, show his strength a long way from home. Yeah, that is a long way. We've got the whole of this lap now just to hold it. He's just gapped the other two there. He hasn't lost them yet, though. They're clinging on to his wash. They are indeed, but uh, he is uh, turning this into a painful chase for them. But he, as you rightly said, he hasn't dismissed them. Meanwhile, up front, Spain on your left, Portugal on your right, and, and it is uh, Pimenta with the best part of a boat length. And he'll want to get into the turn here. And uh, I would say accelerate out of the turn into the final straight and make his move because he's got the strength to move a fair way from home. And they're just beginning to uh, burn up here. Yeah. Poland involved there. Interesting that Jakrasak's just eased up there, Slovenian. He had a sprint early, couldn't break them, so he'll wait perhaps for one last try as they get round this bend to the end. Pimenta just having a look round, goes wide, looks to, keeps looking towards his right, our left, as if to say, come on then, let's see what you've got. And the answer is not a lot at the moment. Now, Pimenta's uh, paddle work and his uh, blade work is so much more effective, getting better coverage. The other man just rocking and rolling, and Pimenta just going away, confident that he had the pace and the strength to move away to become a European champion over 5,000 metres. It just puts in a little bit of acceleration in to finish in style. And so it's Spain who take the gold, Spain who take the silver, Portugal who take the gold. Yeah, and a really interesting fascinating sprint coming up well done to Paventa from Portugal disappointed with what happened to his boat at the World Championships and quite a sprint coming now for the bronze medal looks like it's going to be Poland that's number 20 really really putting it in there Rafael Rosolski great result for him he's got clear water between him and the rest of the field and takes the bronze medal and uh, Jost at the back just burnt off there so Portugal, Spain and Poland, the one, two, three. Pimenta rejoicing, 
but capturing the title that he won in Moscow in 2016. Yeah, and that's not an easy task to stand up in that unstable K1. Great to see a big sprint finish and a bit of a cheer also for number one, the, the last finisher, Necriosis, uh, the Lithuanian. So a helping hand, I wonder. I think he's just going to push his boat in, use yeah. it as a float. It's not the first time he's done that. I remember doing it in, him doing it at the World Championships back in 2018. He's a very popular winner and uh, obviously delighted there. And not delighted, Josef Dostal. Yeah, he wasn't at all, was he? Equipment letting him down there. There's Max Rensmit. I mean, such a fantastic paddler in a straight line, but struggled with some of the tactics today and probably pretty tired from his weekend's racing. Yeah, Pimenta likes to win. Oh, he does, he really celebrates. And at the World Championships, he had a problem because they had portages where you have to take your boat, pick your boat up on the pontoon and run further down the pontoon and get back in again. He actually damaged his rudder of his boat and therefore wasn't able to finish. And you could see the frustration on his face. Really disappointed with that, and he's delighted here to take the win. He was really the dominant force the whole way through that race. Buzan from Spain tried to put him under pressure, but when it came down to it, down to the sprint, well, Pimenta was far the better man. Yeah, and the defending champion, Noah from Hungary, not really at the races today. No, he was there or thereabouts early on, wasn't he? But it's, it's so hard. You've got to be able to dig really, really deep in these 5K races, and he just wasn't able to do that. But a strong fi fi finish from the Polish paddler there. Uh, Rosalski also to take the bronze. Yeah, and that was intelligent, intelligent paddling because he kept himself there or thereabouts, but he didn't get involved. So he just bided his time and said, there'll be one move that I have to make, and that will be possibly for the bronze medal, and that's what I've got to focus on. Yeah, and he waited, didn't he? And that's the thing. Sometimes when you're in a group like that, you've got to wait and wait and wait and hold yourself back and then go. And there's Pimenta doing a rather dramatic uh, jump into the water. Pictures that no doubt will find their way back home. A confirmation gold to Fernando Pimenta. Volta Buzan of Spain, good effort. Uh, a worthy silver medalist and Rafael Rosolski of Poland, the smartest of the rest.